All right, and it looks like we are live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Daily Digital, where I keep you well informed with what's going on in our digital world around us. Um, today is July the 19th, July the 19th, 2022, and we've got a few bits of noise uh, that's been going around here lately that I want to share with you all. The first one being from NASA. I know we covered NASA last week when it came to the James Webb Telescope, but NASA is brewing up a new mission that will launch pretty soon. The next one is a little bit about social media done differently, a little bit more on the decentralized side. Um, the next one is about how currently the Euro is losing its value, definitely compared to the American US dollar. And then the last one is for our developers out there that's looking to get started with uh, AR and VR technology. So. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so the first item on the block here today is all about NASA. NASA is preparing to launch a mission called Dragonfly, and this Dragonfly will actually go all the way out to Saturn's moon called Titan. Um, Titan is believed to be comparable to the Earth that we currently live on here, and the reason why they want to go out there is, I'm assuming, to find alien life, but to also trying to figure out, hey, what mysteries that we can solve um, since the Titan moon is actually comparable to the Earth. What mysteries can we solve uh, by putting those two side by side? Uh, the mission is set to take place, I believe, in 2026, and it should last about eight years to for it to get there. So 2034 is when it will actually land. And it's going to be about the size of a riding lawnmower. Uh, it's going to be more like a drone. So it's going to be like an aerial drone instead of like a, uh, the Mars rover that drives around and stuff like that. And it's supposed to last about, I think it said about two and a half years, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to cost us about a billion dollars. Uh, I think at the time of this writing here, they said it was like $850 million, uh, But I then did a little bit of research further and saw somebody said that it was uh, going to cost about a billion dollars, which, uh, in my opinion, I definitely believe it. Yeah. So, how much would it cost? Eight hundred and fifty million. Um, but again, we'll we'll see about that there. All right. So I do want to share with you guys a video here as well. I uh, just want to touch on why is NASA sending the Dragonfly mission to Titan? Um, again, both Earth and Titan have hard crust through Titan's. Uh, is composed though Titans is composed of water ice rather than a rock both worlds both thick atmospheres composed mostly of nitrogen uh, Oh, which reminds me as well that the Titan will actually be powered by nuclear power um, because Titan is um, Actually like very 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 cold. I think it said like negative 200 degrees uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit uh, and then nuclear power is actually really going to heat up all of the components inside of the um, the drone, the Titan drone there, so, or the Dragonfly drone, sorry, uh, so it would actually kind of balance itself out. Uh, both have liquid on the surface and precipitation in the air, both, but these two are primarily because of methane, so there are methane clouds, there's methane rain, there are methane rivers and lakes and seas. Uh, there are even dunes on Titan, though they are made of organic molecules, rather than silica and deep under its ice shell, Titan may possess a subterranean ocean made of liquid water. Alrighty, so again, I just wanna play this video here. Again, you can kind of read through this article. I'll put the link of it into the uh, description for this video. Is there life on Titan? Um, I mean, they know uh, quite a bit about, you know, um, uh, they know quite a bit about what's going on on the Titan moon already, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, <laughs> if they've seen some alien life forms on there already as well. But, you know, we'll just have to kind of wait and see until 2034 to, uh, to wonder what's going on there. All right, so yeah, let's jump right into this video here. NASA is pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and expanding the limits of technology. I am proud to announce that our next New Frontiers mission, Dragonfly, will explore Saturn's largest moon, Titan.
Dragonfly will be the first drone lander with the capability to fly over 100 miles through Titan's thick atmosphere. Titan is unlike any other place in our solar system and the most comparable to early Earth. The instruments on board will help us investigate organic chemistry and search for chemical signatures of past or even present life. So we have on Titan opportunity to observe the processes um, that were present on early Earth when life began to form and possibly even conditions that may be able to harbor life today. One of the things that is particularly exciting about this mission is that we can do the very detailed chemical measurements but be able to put them in the context of Titan as a system. It's the science that really motivates us to do this exciting and difficult mission, Go Dragonfly. So yeah, and I just want to kind of zoom back over here real quick so you guys can kind of see uh, this is the mock-up of it. I'm not sure if it's going to be the final result of what Dragonfly would actually look like, but this is kind of just the mock-up of it. And you can see the size of it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to get out into uh, orbit, take eight years to get to Saturn, uh, Moon, Titan, and stuff like that. But at the end of it, it's going to just be this um, drone here that's going to be flying all over, um, I think it said like over 200 kilometers of, um, uh, of Saturn's, like, uh, well, I should say of uh, Titan's uh, over like 200 kilometers of Titan's surface there, which is actually like two times more than all of the rovers ever put together combined at, um, at that touchdown on Mars. Alrighty, so the next bit here, uh, I just want to introduce a few people over to uh, what's they calling it? I think it's Martik, uh, M R T K, and Martik is pretty much just the developer program. Um, from Microsoft itself and they are allowing people to create uh, stuff using mixed reality um, so if you are familiar with unity uh, this will pretty much just come hand in hand with you um, mixed reality toolkit is just uh, like a unity toolkit that you can use to create stuff in augmented reality and virtual reality so uh, if you don't know what mixed reality is it's basically just a mix between augmented and virtual reality uh, where you can utilize uh, the same aspect of bringing virtual items, digital stuff into your real world here. Uh, and I just want to kind of go through some of the features that it adds to it. If you haven't done any development work before uh, and you're kind of curious about, you know, what to do and how to do it, um, this here would definitely give you a good overview of it. Um, um, and if you have done some stuff before, but you're using something else, uh, maybe like Snap AR or, or um, uh, AR Toolkit from um, from Apple as well. Uh, you may want to actually check this out. So as you can see here, they have Object Manipulator uh, with your own hands. It looks like so again with this being augmented reality, you don't have to actually use like the um, VR hand controls and stuff like that. You also have bounds control, so you have different boundary boxes around some of your digital assets. Um, you have shell buttons on there for the hollow lens. Uh, I personally don't have a hollow lens, um, but that's actually pretty nice that you can actually touch some of those buttons. Uh, you had hand menu, so it, again, it just actually sees your hand as a gesture, um, and then you can create a menu directly from that. Um, auto world lock on hand drop that's actually pretty nice as well so you can lock the world on that and then also tool tips so again I didn't want to go through all of them this, this video is like three minutes long uh, but down here it kind of gives you a quick rundown of the different features that they offer um, again button balance control object manipulator system keyboard interactable solver tool tip uh, MRTK standard shader sliders app bar pointers. I mean, I've got a lot of features inside of this MRTK here. Um, so if you are a developer, or again, if you're just looking to start getting into some development work, creating some AR technology, uh, if you have a project in mind, you might want to actually go ahead and look into uh, that platform there using Unity. All right, and so now here the next one is DSO. So you may have heard of DeFi, Decentralized Finance, uh, but I've found that a lot of people have not heard of DSO yet, which is a Decentralized Social. Uh, so DSO is a company who has been, 
allowing people to uh, essentially create applications on their own blockchain. So it's their black their blockchain is actually just going to be all um, decentralized. Uh, all of these apps are going to be on chain. Um, currently, right now, apps like Twitter, apps like Facebook, apps like in, uh, Instagram, uh, they are not open source. Deso is open source. Uh, they're also not on chain, meaning that all of their code um, is not accessible. But again, uh, all of, everything that is placed on the Deso blockchain will be. Um, as you can see here, existing blockchains can't scale social apps. Uh, so that's why they created the Deso blockchain. Uh, Deso unlocks the next frontier for blockchain and it's 100% open source, 100% on-chain open data. Um, the featured app is Diamond. So Diamond I've actually been using for a few months now and I like Diamond. Diamond is actually pretty cool. Uh, one really, really, really cool thing about it is that it allows you to create your NFTs uh, and then mint them completely for free essentially uh, right onto the blockchain. So you don't have to go through OpenSea. Uh, or anything like that, any third party, you can actually mint them yourself. Um, and that is actually very, very powerful in my opinion. Um, not only with that, if you are a creator, you can actually earn diamonds in um, the diamond. Well, I think all these cells you can earn diamond. Uh, but what a diamond is, basically like a tip. So you no longer just create a YouTube video and then that YouTube um, video gets a lot of views and then YouTube pays you. You can actually create a video, post it on Diesel, and then you can get tips from that um, video and then form of what they call diamonds. Uh, there are over 200 apps built on Deso currently. Uh, here's a few of them. Uh, Polygram, I know of. Uh, Cloud, uh, Cloud of Vista, I've heard. BitCloud, I've used. Dow Dow, I'm in the process of getting that one started. Deso5, same thing, in the process of getting that one started. Um, and from this list here, oh, Moon Bounce, I've heard of Moon Bounce also. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and Check out this uh, website, deso.org. Um, see which ones are you know related to you, which ones that you would be comfortable using. Um, definitely check them out. Uh, because Deso, in my opinion, decentralized everything is the way to go uh, because it, again, just brings back ownership of your own content. So instead of actually putting it on the servers for other companies, you get to put it on essentially your own server. Um, again, 100% open source, 100% on-chain open data, uh, on-chain profiles, social NFT. So NFTs minted on Deso are associated with the artist profile and can be shown off on the buyer's profile, enhancing provenance while making them inherently social and more valuable. Uh, you have social tokens on here. Every profile created on Deso can have a social token attached to it. Social tokens on Deso earn cash flows for them. Uh, NFT sales and soon all forms of creator monetization. Uh, social tipping, aka diamonds. Because Deso is a blockchain, it's never been easier to integrate money native features like tipping into your app. The tips can be integrated directly with content, allowing users to give diamonds to posts rather than just likes. So, again, just for posting on to the Deso blockchain, uh, you can get tipped for it. Uh, for like good quality um, content and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so here is the Diamond app. Again, uh, this is just the link for it. I'll definitely add this to the description below. Or again, you can just go to deso.org and then they have all the links to all those on there. Um, and again, Deso is is actually pretty nice. I'm, I'm actually liking Deso. I need to actually use it a whole lot more. Um, they say here, likes are for Web2, diamonds are forever. That's actually pretty catchy there. Uh, mint NFTs in a few clicks. Any post you create on Diamond can be minted as an NFT. They're all so virtually gas free. So just take note of that as well. Uh, you can send tips. You can buy creator coins. Creator coins is actually a really good thing here. Um, you can airdrop NFTs. You can take your profile with you to any other, um, uh, what's it called? Any other app on Deso blockchain. So you no longer have to have a profile for Instagram, a profile for Twitter, a profile for Facebook. You can just have one main profile and take your name along with you through all the other ones. Um, and then here's one that I actually found. Um, I came across this like on Twitter or something like that. It's called Peepeth. And again, I think they're just trying to be like the Twitter um, competitor or something like that. And for whatever reason, I actually tried to join it. I requested an invite for it. Um, but it 
nothing ever happened. I never got any emails. I never got anything back from it. Uh, so I don't know. I would definitely say be wary about this one. Not saying that they're uh, a rug pull. Not saying that they're trying to scam you or anything like that. But they just might be in beta mode and have a lot of stuff going on. So definitely want to check the white list on this um, or the white paper on this and then try to figure out what exactly is going on. Uh, if I click on enter site here, again, it's just kind of like a um, Twitter clone kind of thing, uh, but just a decentralized version of it. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with all of my DSO apps on the DSO blockchain and stuff like that. Alrighty. And so for the last thing that I have here for you guys today is the Euro. The Euro is now getting a whole lot weaker for the first time in about two decades, guys. Two decades, the Euro is now uh, the same price as the American dollar, the USD. Uh, and what exactly does that mean? It just means that the US dollar is now stronger and more comparable to the Euro. Um, so today, and what's, I'm this was a uh, 7 oh no, probably 7 12. So July 12, 2022. Uh, looks like this was when the euro was actually uh, equal to the US dollar. And as you can see here, if I change this from one month to uh, about one year, um, as you can see here, a year ago, the US dollar was about $1.19 compared to one dollar for the euro so that just means that if you had a hundred dollars um, in US dollars and you tried to go over to uh, Europe then your money would not go as far the euro would actually be uh, less in that case so your money would um, not be worth as much but now it seems like the euro is on sale you're getting a couple of deals on there so people if you've been planning to go over to um, uh, Europe in, in the next couple of months or so I would definitely say book that ticket now because the price of the euro is currently uh, Pretty much the same as the American dollar. So it's a one dollar and one cents um, So that means your dollar is actually going to go further in in that case um, But what that also does mean Is that Now investors and so there's a couple of reasons why this is happening, right? Um, the, the, the one thing is that investors are now um, taking their money and converting over to U.S. dollars. Uh, another thing that's happening is the whole inflation rate is going crazy. Uh, another thing that's happening as well is that the interest rate over in Europe, um, they did not increase their interest rate. So the Fed uh, went ahead and increased the interest rate for America and thus our dollar ratio, uh, what have you, is actually a little bit... Um, better now in that case i would say and if i jump back over to uh my links here um yeah the sudden shock has triggered record-breaking inflation the european central bank has already hiked i think it might have been i have another link as well i think it might have been this one i was kind of reading uh this one was july the 17th so about two days ago um, the European Union's currency has dropped by 15% over the past year. Learn why the euro is falling and what it means for Americans. Uh, this one here is actually a really good article to uh, read through. So I definitely recommend um, going through that. What is the euro? It's the currency for the European Union. Uh, why is the euro losing value? Um, to start, inflation is hitting hard uh, with an expected 8.6 rate. Uh, while the economic outlook bears... Da, 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 da. Um, and again, I'm just kind of breezing through here. You guys, th these links will be in the uh, description for the video. So definitely go ahead and uh, check these out. Um, yeah, the Fed's decision to raise interest rates in the U.S. had an indirect impact on the euro's value. As America's interest rates rise, so does the value of the interest rate of the interest bearing accounts in the U.S., making them more attractive to investors globally. So their investors are, you know, investing more into that. Um, one thing that is happening, though, is that the people who have, I guess the Americans who have businesses over in Europe, um, their businesses are starting to take a hit because of that. Um, because, again, you know, their, their dollar isn't converting over as much um, when they convert it back over to, you know, USD. Um, how will a weaker euro impact Americans? Yeah, so American businesses and workers that operate in Europe are and are paid in euros will also see their income decrease. 
if they are converting their European earnings back to dollars. Uh, will a weekly euro save Americans money when traveling? Uh, it certainly makes the math of converting dollars to euro a whole lot easier. A $250 train ticket will cost you $250. Actually, last June, that same ticket would have cost you $305. So literally $55 more last June uh, just because of the conversion rate difference between the two. Uh, if you're planning a trip to Europe, you'll want to use a credit card or debit card that doesn't change in foreign train that doesn't change a foreign ex trans that doesn't that doesn't charge I'm assuming that's supposed to say that doesn't charge a foreign transaction fee in order to get the most of the discounted euro uh, so again keyword it is discounted now for us Americans over here uh, sorry to anybody that is over seas and are going through this but again that's kind of how the world works um, unfortunately definitely unfortunately uh, the bad news prices might be cheaper for Americans once you get to Europe but flying there has been difficult yeah flying everywhere has been difficult um, so yeah uh, definitely let me know what you guys think I don't want to make this video too too crazy long but I do want to make sure that you guys are all aware of what's going on again in the digital world uh, that we live in uh, this digital era has been quite crazy to say the least I know there's a lot of stuff that has been going around in the background that I think a lot of people should be aware of case in point the euro um, decreasing in value as much as it is and like I said the past 20 years this has never happened so um, again please do check out all the links inside the description for this video um, like, let me know what you think in the comments tap in with me on all of my social media channels and as always you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will check you guys tomorrow